Today we are going to work on some mobility for the upper body, namely the T-spine, the neck, and the shoulders. So in our video today, I'm going to be using a few pieces of equipment that would benefit you if you could gather up real quickly. The main one is going to be a tennis ball. Okay, so if you don't have anything else, find a way to get a tennis ball or something that has a little bit of give. A lacrosse ball is going to be too hard for today. You will need a weight. This could be as simple as a can of soup or a wine bottle. If you don't have an actual weight sitting around your house, it does not have to be that heavy to be useful. And bonus points if you've got a foam roller. So those three things today are going to make this series go a lot easier, a lot more smooth for you. Um, and other than that, we'll jump right in. So upper body, T-spine, neck, shoulders. I went through this class earlier today with a group of people in person and got excellent feedback. So I just wanted to share it with everyone um, and remember it for myself. So we're gonna start mobilizing the spine or feeling how we can move the spine on our own before we do any of this work. So if you've taken a mobility video from me before, you'll know that I usually start with some kind of a test to see where your body is naturally before we do the work. Then we'll come back to it after again and see how much of that release technique has given us more range of motion. So for today's, I want you to start by finding the bottom of your rib cage. Okay, so we're gonna dig around until you feel like the bottom ribs. And if you can, use your thumbs to follow around the back of the ribs until you touch a vertebra. Okay, more than likely that's going to be a similar vertebra to the bottom of your rib cage or your, the end of your T-spine. Okay, so we're gonna think about that as our ending point today. And we wanna roll down one vertebra at a time, starting from the top of the head. So you're gonna tuck the chin to the chest. Roll down your spine, one vertebra at a time until you get to that one that you've got your fingers on. And then you'll stack the opposite direction to come back up to the top. Okay, you can keep your hands there if you need that feedback, or you can drop it and take a few more rounds of that roll down and roll back up. Another way to think about this is just make sure as you roll down, you're not going to start hinging at your hips. Okay, so if you start to bend and then you notice that you want your hips to move, that's a little bit too far for today. One more time as you roll down, think about what feels tight, maybe what's not moving so well, what feels a little stickier than normal, and then come back up to the top. We'll also take a few extensions or arching to move back the opposite way. I probably already messed up a little bit with moving my lower back, my lumbar spine. So in order to not do that, I'm gonna tighten up my abs, hold my core, maybe even place my hands on my low back and just try to take a few movements, extending the spine in the opposite direction, what I like to call arching to the back. Okay, this one's harder. I can forward flex much better than I can hyperextend to the back. So now that we've done that, we're gonna try bending sideways. Again, thinking stopping about at that waistline, drop the head to one side, see how far you can bend. I just got a nice little pop, and then we stack it back up to the top. Try three or four all on one side. And we've got one more on that same side coming up. If I'm going too fast, you can certainly slow things down, pause your video, take your time through some of these movements as needed. And then we'll go the opposite way. Take note for yourself if you have one direction that's easier to bend or easier to move than the other. This is my yucky way. And for me, it's my left side. Bending to the left is a lot harder than bending to the right. We'll take one more and then come back up to the top. Hopefully as you're going through these again, you're kind of assessing how well that's going for you. Um, and then find a place to sit down for a second. 
the sturdier the surface, the better. This is a little bit squishy for me. Um, and take anything you have and squeeze it between the knees. You're gonna try to keep your feet flat on the floor. Squeeze your foam roller, a book, um, a yoga block if you have that sitting around. Squeeze that between the knees. And now we're gonna try to rotate. So turn the head to one side and twist without letting the knees shift and without letting your hips shift too much. Not too much at all. Yeah, not at all. Three or four rotations. Again, keeping track of where you feel tight. I can certainly feel where I'm tight already. And for me, that's right in the middle of my spine, kind of right where my racer back would be. Um, and a little bit lower for me. But yeah, so there's our assessment, okay? Have in mind what places feel tight for you, and then we're gonna come down to the floor with that tennis ball. Okay, so now that we're on the ground, you're gonna take your tennis ball, and you could start from either the top of your spine and work your way down to that lower end of your T-spine, or you can start from the lower portion of your T-spine and work your way up. You get to decide, that's the beauty of this. But what we wanna do is pick one of those places. I'm gonna start at the bottom today just because that's what I did in class. And we're gonna lay right on top of that tennis ball, okay? So your goal is to put the tennis ball directly on a vertebra. And then we're gonna start to breathe into the feeling of pressure onto the ball. So if I'm thinking about this in a way where say my vertebrae are stacked kind of like this and the ball is underneath this one. As I breathe, it's gently going to press the vertebra up and then back down. So what I'm doing with my hands now is really an exaggeration, of course, of the movement that we're trying to create in the spine with this ball, this release work. Um, but the idea is that we're giving the muscles a little bit of a stretch, helping the joint to move um, one segment at a time. So you're segmenting that spine. And once you've taken a few breaths, you're gonna move the ball to the next vertebra. And you're gonna take your time, enjoy this as you breathe and try to create a little segmented movement. you go you might get a little pop from time to time if things do start to move a little bit or do start to release and that's okay you always want to be conscious of how the movement is feeling in your body what the sensations are remembering good pain versus I guess I'll call it bad pain or discomfort versus pain certain places along my spine, and I know this now from teaching this and doing it on my own a few times, lower in my T-spine feels okay. But as I start to move up a little bit higher towards where my sports bra would be or you know some of those places closer towards my shoulder blades, whoo, it gets a little rough. So while it's feeling good, hopefully, that's where you are right now. <laughs> um, you can do a little bit more pushing into the ball to try to create movement. Or if breathing is all that you need in order to feel a little bit of those gliding adjustments, that's fine. Try to relax your body weight into the ground all around the ball. And always use this as an opportunity to connect with your breath. So three or four breaths on each segment would be ideal. If you feel like you need more, use more. And conversely, of course, if you feel like you need less, that's okay too.
You certainly don't need to try and hold still for any of this. If you feel like you're no longer in the right position, you can wiggle around, you can fidget, you can readjust your body so that you get the best benefit from that pressure on the ball. This is an exciting video, huh? Just like, welcome to watching Abby lay on the floor for 20 minutes at a time. Oh, but we have a special guest. This is Honey. Hi, sweet girl. Can you lay down, please? No? Honey loves tennis balls, and I think she knows I have one. So she might be wanting to play a little bit. Yep, like I said, she's gonna join us with her tennis ball too. But these are the joys of working out at home, right? More than likely, you don't have a peaceful, serene retreat. Maybe there's kids running around. Maybe there's pets that wanna play with you. And that's all part of life, so it's okay. You're doing what you can, and you're gonna feel better no matter what. Right, honey? Just remembering we're taking again that three to four breaths on each segment. You can hear it in my voice. I'm starting to get to that part where it does not feel as comfortable. So I might start to get a little bit more quiet as we go. Definitely the places where I hold a lot of tension. I've been working hard in the gym too, as you probably have. Especially on those spots that have a lot of musculature, a lot of places where we're trying to improve and gain strength, they might hurt a little more. So take some extra care around the spots that are feeling more tender and give your nervous system, give your body the chance to relax a little bit. Already feels better for me than the moment where I moved the ball onto this spot. So it's starting to surrender a bit. As you move up, oh, I have more tennis balls now. You really want to play, huh? Okay, go get it. Oh, you missed! You missed! Miss Honey, you're on video. You gotta be better at catching. All right, so I was getting to, to a point a second ago before I threw the ball. <laughs> hit her in the head. Um, as you get up closer toward your neck, you may need to start supporting your head with your hands. So I'm not quite there yet, but if you're a little bit ahead of me, um, you'll notice that the neck bends the opposite direction than your T-spine does. All right, so the thoracic spine has a natural curve that when we're laying down curves toward the floor. The neck curves in the opposite direction. So it actually curves up towards the ceiling a little bit more, which makes it harder for that area to sink into the ball or feel a little bit of pressure into that tennis ball. Slowly but surely we are making our way up to the neck. And of this whole video, this is the portion that will take the longest. Here's a little food for thought for you. You've got 12 thoracic vertebra and seven cervical vertebra. So if you spent one minute on each vertebra, what's that math? 20 something, 12 plus seven, like 19. 
Yeah, it's like almost 20 minutes of just laying on the floor. Treat yourself. Yeah. Ooh. Not the easiest up here in the upper portion of my T-spine. I'm also not surprised. It's for sure the tightest part on my body. Now I've gotten to that point where I might need to adjust my head, tuck my chin more towards my chest. You can play around with different placements of your arms also. So once I'm up here, it kind of feels nice to cross my arms over my chest. I get a little bit more stretch around the shoulder blades that way. Slowly but surely, we will make our way all the way up to the top of the spine. A little check back in of what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to massage out the muscles that surround the spine on either side. Right, that would be a, a different type of exercise. This one, we're really trying to get a little movement of each segment of the vertebra. So again, if you're looking at my hands representing the bones of the spine, we're trying to get them to glide this way. Right, and this is directly related to the way that my spine is when I'm lying on the floor here. So that little up and down movement, not too much, right? The spine is there for a reason. It protects the spinal cord. <laughs> we don't want to move it so much that it bothers the spinal cord. That would be a terrible thing. If you go a little quicker than me, once you are finished getting all the way up to the top of the spine, spend some time on the joint of the spine and the top of the head, or not the top of the head, the base of the skull. That can feel really nice just to get a little bit of massage in there. So that's where I've made my way up to at about this point. Just getting up into the base of the skull, where the occipital bone is, moving around there for a moment. And different placements of the chin, the head, how I'm extending or flexing. And then, once you feel satisfied with that, we're gonna set the ball to the side and just lay flat on the floor for a moment. Take your hands down by your sides, palms towards the ceiling. Adjust so you're in a comfortable position, flat on the floor. And notice how this feels. Hopefully you've spread out a little bit more. It's easier to sink your body weight into the ground. And you just feel a little bit more released. One more deep breath in and out. We're gonna come back up to stand in a moment. So if you need a second to get your bearings, slowly make your way back up to a standing position. This is where we're going to check in again with some of that range of motion and some of that mobility that we checked at the very beginning. So like before, go ahead and tuck your chin towards your chest. Roll down a little bit. 
and notice the difference. If it's easier to segment one vertebra than the other. Mine is actually a little sore. I can feel some, some muscles stretching differently than they did before, but the movement feels pretty good. Forward and back, test it out. You can go side and side, some lateral bending. Definitely feels better on that side. Now this is my worst side, let's check it out. Yeah, I feel better on that side too. And last but not least is that rotation. If you'd like to do it in a seated position, go for it. Or if you'd like to just do it standing, you could. You can explore all sorts of different angles. You don't have to be strict forward, backward, side, or rotate. You can move your spine in any direction. And hopefully that's starting to free up for you a little bit, okay? So next, go ahead and grab your foam roller and we're gonna come back down to the ground. What's the matter, Miss Honey? Right. So now that we're back on the floor with the foam roller, we're gonna practice some more um, extension and flexion, trying to move just the T-spine. So place that foam roller at the base of your T-spine. We're gonna solidify into the abs, so really hold the core tight um, from the T-spine down, right? Your lumbar spine. Um, we're gonna place the hands behind the head and then curl the portion of your back that's around the foam roller and then try to move that part into extension as well. All right, just opening and closing the body. This might feel really nice. You are getting a little bit of a massage on the muscles now that surround the spine, obviously because this foam roller is, has a much bigger surface area than a tennis ball. So take a few there. And then like we did with the ball before, we're gonna roll onto the next part of the spine. So I moved an inch or two down and I'm gonna repeat that process, trying not to move any other part of my back except the T-spine. Okay, maybe my neck's gonna move, that's fine. All I mean is that from waist down, lumbar spine, pelvis, abdomen are trying to stay pretty darn still. So bonus, you get a little bit of lower abdominal work. You're welcome. Okay, same as before, two or three reps. If you come across a spot for you that feels very, very tight, like it could use a little extra love, give it some extra love. This guy's very cozy back here, by the way. I haven't introduced you to my other dog yet. That's Taco. Taco loves, right, buddy? Hi. Taco loves soft things. Um, as you can see, he has a, he's quite a throne set up back there, um, but he loves it. All right, now as you move up a little bit higher in your back, once you get towards the shoulder blades, you're gonna find a little, to be a little bit harder to move. So maybe you'll have to move where the elbows are to try to open up those areas a little bit better. Um, so do what you need to do. And yeah, once you reach the top of the shoulder blades, we don't need to work on that movement anymore. The neck is great at moving around forward and back, so you probably don't have to you know, work to get that to do too much. But here's your special treat for the day. Once you get to the top of the shoulder blades, start foam rolling your back. It's gonna feel lovely. Mm. No wrong answers here. Whatever feels good to you, just roll it out for a sec. 
I like how at the start of this video I had one tennis ball and now there are three. That is life with dogs. Oh, she's coming back. What's going on, Miss Honey? Do you want a ball? Hey. You want this? Go up there. Go we'll get it. Cool. How are we doing? Good? We're going to move on to the next part. Now that we've got our T-spine nice and loose, hopefully you can feel already how much more open that is. Um, we're gonna start to move the shoulder blades a little bit. So get into the shoulder girdle. This foam roller is shorter than I would like, okay? Ideally, for this next exercise, the longer foam rollers work best, but I'm gonna make it work because that's all I got, okay? I'm gonna lay on top of that foam roller so that it's between my shoulder blades. For now, I'm lifting up my hips just so that I'm not creating extra arching in my low back. I'm gonna try to keep my spine relatively neutral. And I've got the back of my head resting as best I can on the roller too, so that I'm not falling back that away. okay? So, trying to create a neutral spine. Nice long length. What we wanna do from here is reach the fingertips toward the ceiling and separate the shoulder blades as much as you can. And now you're gonna pull the shoulder blades back and think about wrapping them around the foam roller, getting a little bit of a squeeze. Okay, so as you move, the fingers are gonna move toward the ceiling and away from the ceiling. But instead of thinking pinch the shoulder blades together, you've got something back there. You've got that foam roller and we're gonna keep the shoulder blades apart as we retract. One more thing to check in on. Notice if you have lifted your shoulders up towards your ears. Almost always, that's not what we want to be doing. So keep the shoulders away from your ears as best you can, even if that means you have to push them down actively. Okay, so we're getting some movement of the shoulder blades with a little restriction by that foam roller. Bye, honey. Okay, from here, we're gonna move into elevation. So you do want to move the shoulders up towards the ears and then push them down away from the ears. Giving yourself a general idea of how your shoulders move on your rib cage and in your body, right? Great, you got it. If you wanna do more, do more. I'm gonna move on. We can come up to a hands and knees position. You can move your foam roller out of the way. Hands and knees into a quadruped. From here, I would like you to solidify once again into your abs. We're gonna try to keep the low back as stable as possible, very still, and move the shoulder blades together without bending the elbows. Okay, check in. When you retract the shoulder blades like this, it's very common to bend the elbows a little bit, so push them to straighten, even rotate the elbow ditch a little bit forward right in front of you. And then you're gonna push the ground away, do the opposite and separate the shoulder blades as much as possible into protraction. So we'll retract, squeeze them together, and then push to separate them apart. Now you might be like, um, Abby, we've done these scat push-ups a lot before. Pardon my, um, <laughs> my imitation of how other people talk. Uh, Abby, we've done this. This is really boring and stupid. Um, it's also really good for you. It might seem boring, but I promise your upper body is gonna feel so much better than when you started. So give me a few more reps of these. Five to 10 total. Thinking about the shoulder blades pulling together and then push the shoulder blades apart. Okay, that was good for me. Shake it out, scan, assess, see how you feel. We are going to go into that same exercise one more time, but thinking about it a slightly different way. Um, I think this is a useful tool. Um, so we just thought about the shoulder blades moving. To me, that gives it a bit of a limited feel. My range of motion doesn't feel quite as open, as expansive. I tend not to breathe as freely as I could if we do it this way. Set yourselves up the same exact way we just did. 
And now, instead of thinking shoulder blades move, I want you to think drop your T-spine as low as you can towards the floor without moving anything else. And then pull your T-spine up towards the ceiling as much as possible. So now we're almost thinking about the rib cage moving, the spine moving around the shoulder blades as opposed to the shoulder blades doing the work or doing the movement. Like I said, it's the same thing. It's the same exercise, but it gives me a different perspective. And somehow that perspective changes how I am moving. So interesting thing about that, I think is just that the first one tends to feel a little bit more strengthy, tends to feel a little bit more robotic. Whereas the second one gives me more expansive expansiveness. Yeah. We're going to go with that. Um, so like I said, it's still doing the same things. You're still getting the same benefit. Um, it just feels a little, a little different for you. Um, so we've gotten the shoulders to move. We've gotten the T-spine to move a little bit. Um, we've rolled some things out, maybe released a few things. Last thing I want to touch on is going to be some strengthening for the rotator cuff a little bit now that we've kind of loosened some things up. No, I haven't gone in and released any of that tissue, um, but it's still a great exercise and it feels like something that would be great with this series. So here's where you're going to grab your weight. Okay. And we're going to sit on the floor with one leg bent in and another leg straight out in front of you. I'm going to think about my torso being a straight line and then my arm coming out at a 90 degree angle from that straight line of my torso. Okay, so I'm gonna take one hand behind me and sit up really tall. The back of the elbow pushes into the inside edge of my knee to hold the elbow straight or to hold it in place and then slowly drop the weight down as far as it'll go without losing the alignment of your setup. And then you're gonna pull it back up to the top. So slowly lowering, keeping the posture tall, trying to keep that 90 degree angle as best you can from chest to arm. And you'll take about eight reps. On your eighth rep, this is mine coming up right now. I'm gonna leave my arm at the bottom and gently press against it with the other hand for about 10 seconds. This is five, four, three, two, one. I'll release the hand and then bring that weight back up to the top. Okay. Switch to the other side. Same exact thing. So you'll bring your arm out at hopefully which is about a 90 degree angle and then prop yourself up so that the chest is nice and tall. My 90 is not so good. I can see myself in a I've got the little glass fireplace that's reflective right now. So I'm checking my own form. About eight reps. You could do more if you feel like you need more if your weight's really light. Maybe you'll need a few more reps if you have a very heavy weight at home. So like all you have is a 10. Eight reps might be a lot. Right, Taco? He's so chill right now. This is good. Watch, I'm gonna speak too soon. He's gonna get up and bark madly at something that happens outside. Keep it slow. The lowering especially you're fighting gravity as you go down. So don't let it take over and just drop the weight. I'll guess this is about my eighth one. I'm gonna try to keep my arm as low as possible, apply a little pressure, and then drive against my hand with that press. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hi, my girl. 
and then bring it on back up. Okay? So you could go ahead and repeat that several more times in the same angle, or if you'd like, instead of being in this 90 degree, we can open the arm out to more of a 45. You could open it up all the way. I guess that wouldn't be 45, but you know what I mean. Then you could also come all the way out to a straight open angle here because all of those different angles are great to strengthen. Um, I would highly recommend doing three rounds of that every time you get to it. Um, but other than that, that's all I've got planned for you. So hopefully you feel a lot more free in your upper body, in your shoulders and your T-spine. You have a little bit more movement there. Um, and thanks for joining me today.